Okay, the last section in this chapter has to do with social media and language. So my question to you is, do you have different language on social media than you do in person? Or does your language depend on what exactly you're using? I know personally when I text, my language is casual, although I, I still insist on putting periods at the end of sentences. Um, and when I send an email, my tone is much more formal. I am more likely to send a, a quick, not thoughtless, but not necessarily well thought out text. But if it's email, I can spend a long time crafting it to say exactly what I want to say. Why? Because in an email, I'm much more concerned about the impression that I am making on people. So we, um, <clears throat> when you are sending a message to a professor, a boss, especially professors, it is important to double check your messages to make sure that they don't have errors. I know it shouldn't matter, but when I get an email from a student and eyes, like when they're using it as the word I, when it's not capitalized, I, that just makes me feel the student doesn't care enough about what they're saying. I don't really care. I don't like it much in a text message, but I understand that it's it's slightly different. So, <clears throat> okay, that's good about that one. All right, so it, we're still thinking about impression management. Um, I don't have experience with this, but I have heard that dating websites it's all about impression management, right? Before you even meet the person, you want them to have a certain idea about who you are. So generally, um, not generally, but um, people lie on dating websites and women are much more likely to lie about their weight and men are much more likely to lie about their occupation and their income, which I think is interesting. And there's probably other stuff that people lie about. I had a colleague who said uh, one of her, one of the things that was very important to her was that the person be athletic. And so she decided she would, she would, I don't know, should swipe right on <laughs> someone who said that he liked to, to go for hikes. And then they met up and she said they walked about a block and he was already winded. So she felt that that was his in-person persona was different from his online persona. Okay. Um, I, this was really interesting that even your name can create an online impression. So in Germany, the name Alexander was, what was it? 150, 102% more likely to get visits on a dating site than anyone named Kevin. Kevin is not a popular name in Germany. And in fact, uh, uh, it's it's called Kevinism. That's the negative impression. Okay. <clears throat> uh, I don't know. You guys might not use Facebook very much, but what they're saying is, if you are if a person is posting on a friend's page, they are more likely to uh, use warmer language when they maybe uh, make a uh, a comment. Or they post, you know, it's happy birthday. Happy birthday to the, the sweetest person who ever lived. Uh, as opposed to if they're posting on someone, on a page of someone that they are uh, just maybe not quite as well acquainted with, it might be happy birthday. Okay, so they have warmer posts. Because basically what you are letting the world or whoever's reading Facebook know is that you have a special relationship. So there's... Um, there's an interesting text box, the, the focus on research on page 159. And <clears throat> again, okay, so they looked at uh, 12,000 contributors who had written at least 100 comments on the English Wikipedia talk pages. And what they found was the, the these are the, the people who are the editors, okay? <clears throat> Administrators who hold a higher rank 
then editors tend to use more neutral, impersonal, and formal words, and editors communicate more emotionally and relationally. And <clears throat> I like this, an administrator might say that idea has merit. They're kind of disting, distancing themselves from the situation where an editor might say, I really like your suggestion. Okay. And also gender, uh, they were saying, again, this was 12,000 contributors who had been on uh, Wikipedia quite a bit. Women tend, okay, it's not an absolute, tend to communicate in ways that promote social and emotional connection. We're making good progress. Thanks for your input. Okay, the research suggests that if the Wikipedia community wants to grow, its administrators would do well to adopt a more relational style of communicating. All right, one way to achieve this would be to increase the number of female administrators. An alternative would be for male contributors to develop a warmer, more personal style because that helps build community. Okay, <clears throat> last point, and I guess I kind of talked about this, although I wouldn't consider myself an executive, the way that you craft an email, if you are an executive, shows great care is being taken uh, managing impressions. Okay, and they say that uh, professional messages are less formal when written on smartphones than on office computers. So if you're writing it on your, your, your phone, you know, your iPhone, as an executive might type, just jump right into it. Whereas if they were on their um, work computer, they might start with, hello, Jane. All right. <clears throat> a few words about online language and gender. Again, this is, <sighs> the, uh, we're giving you some generalities. It doesn't apply to everybody, but overall men use more large words, more nouns and more profanity. Women use more personal pronouns, verbs, and hedge phrases like, you know, I'm not sure, but. So I like this cartoon where, uh, is his name Jeremy? I forget. He's texting his girlfriend and he writes, hey, and she writes, hi, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. And he, oh, and he says that um, Sarah's tired. She's only using three exclamation points. So, you know, usually she uses a lot. So they're saying, like, oh, women are more more excitable, especially in adolescence. A study looked at the word choices of teenage boys and girls in chat rooms. The boys were more active and assertive, uh, initiating interactions and making proposals, whereas the girls were more reactive. The boys were more flirtatious and sexual. The researchers noted that those accentuated differences were probably due to the age of the participants and that some distinctions would likely recede in adulthood. Okay, <clears throat> so what did we remember from the first two chapters? First chapter that talked about what what is it about online? Online social media communication lacks richness because there aren't nonverbals, which we will talk about next chapter. But even knowing this, people tend to be dis inhibited, meaning they are much more likely to say something online than they would say in person. And there's a certain amount of permanence in online, which I think is why I take a lot of time to craft a message. Did I tell you this message? This is probably one of my most embarrassing, what did I say message? Did I tell you this story? This is an embarrassing professional story for me. <clears throat> I had gone to a colleague's wedding with another colleague of mine. I went to her house and then we drove to the wedding and it was a Sunday. And on the way back, my colleague Carol said to me, Marguerite, when you go home, take the rest of the day off, do not check email. And I said, absolutely. And when I went home, what did I do? Of course, I checked email. <clears throat> and I got a message that was sent to me and to my colleague Carol because we were the chairs of different departments. And it, her last name was Mahmoud. And of course, my last name is Yawin, and it was addressed to Dear Professor Manhood and Yawning. And he referenced someone who worked here whose last name was Iovana, and it changed to Ivan. So obviously, it was spell check. And this was an older person who was 
probably not especially computer savvy. Well, I thought it was funny, so I forward the message to my friend Carol and I say, this is hysterical. He wants to work here and he got every single one of our names wrong. And I hit send. And as soon as I hit send, I realized I hadn't forwarded this to Carol. I had replied to the man who sent the original message. So, <clears throat> When you are online, be very careful about the language that you use and please double check that you are sending it to the person that you mean to send it to. Okay, last point here is for you to think about from what the book says and from what you know from your interactions online, how can language use impact how we manage our, impress our impressions in the online environment. Okay, I am going, I have put up an exercise in Blackboard that's asking you to look at a situation that two people are, in, well, two people, two students and their professor are engaged in. And I just want you to take a look at it and figure out from your knowledge of language, <clears throat> what, what suggestions would you give to these people who are involved in this difficult situation. And that is the end of chapter five.